buckle up. It's your host, MKB, in the house. We are back with episode 40 of Travel Disasters. What? This episode is over the hill, but she doesn't look a day over 20, baby. I'm back from Milwaukee. It was so fun. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. I found a couple of podcast fans in the crowd, which was awesome. We're hitting the Midwest, and I made it back in one piece, so that's the most important part. For updates on all my upcoming shows this month, visit my website, MKB Comedy, under the Upcoming Shows tab. While you have your phone out, make sure to follow this podcast on social media. Subscribe and tell a friend about travel disasters, because that's how this podcast grows. If you have an iPhone and you're listening on the Purple Podcast app, throw me five stars on Apple Podcasts and leave a written review. This week's review comes from a cell phone salesman and they said, hysterical. MKB is great. This podcast is the best. You feel like you're listening to two best friends no matter who the guest is. MKB is a fantastic host and I would highly recommend this one. Oh, thank you so much. I try so hard. Uh, (laughs) This week's guest is so amazing. I wish she was my actual best friend. She's an actress, comedian, podcaster, producer, and an all-around badass, hardworking woman. I look up to her so much, and she's an internationally touring comedian. So she lives in LA right now, and she was kind enough to be a guest on the show while she was in Chicago last week doing some shows around town, and we are so lucky to have her. Natasha Pearl Hansen is in the house. She takes us back to her early days as a comedian when she's crashing on couches to the present where she's staying in luxury hotels for free. That's right. You're going to want to take notes. So here we go. It's you and me, baby. We're going on the trip from hell where every flight is missed. They lose your luggage and you're in the middle seat between a sumo wrestler and a screaming baby. Don't worry. I'm coming along for the ride. I'm Mary Kate Beck and this is Travel Disasters. I love that you were just <laughs> mouthing your entire intro. I have it memorized. I could say it in my sleep. I probably sleep talk my own intro because it's just burned into my it's brain. It's such a good intro. It makes me think I could picture the opening of a show, like yeah. an actual, <laughs> I, I assume that's what you're trying to do, right? Yeah, when we take this baby on tour. Yeah. yeah. We have to travel with travel disasters. But you have to come on stage and on a tour like that and do it exactly like yes. that in that in that same tone of voice and do like yeah. all the miming that you were just doing. Yes. So fun. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Natasha Pearl Hansen, how we doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I just landed in Chicago a couple hours ago. Yeah. And got situated at my hotel and um, ate some Chipotle, and now I'm here. So it's nice. been a very productive afternoon. <laughs> I know. Well, I'm glad that you squeezed us in. This yeah, is super fun. My You're gosh. super busy. You're doing a ton of shows while yeah. you're in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you have going on? Oh my gosh. Well, while I'm here, I always like over jam my schedule. Sometimes I, (laughs) when my like family members will text me, what are you up to today? And I'll just take a picture of my calendar and they're like, what? Yeah. My parents are like, (laughs) do you sleep? I'm like, not really. Right? You can't. I mean, what? I, but I, but when you love what you do, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like that. It's not like, oh my God. I, you know, you're just like, yeah, I get to go to this other cool thing. Yeah. Um, But yeah, so I have, um, I'm recording with you right now. I'm recording my hundredth episode of my <gasps> oh podcast. My God. Future here. role models. Yes, here with Felonius Monk. Um, that'll be coming out St. Patrick's Day, so probably yeah, around the same, around the same time, time that this is. Yeah. Um, so that's exciting for me because this is like this is my favorite studio to record in. Like yes. I, I, like I've said a bunch of times, but I record all over when I travel. Mm-hmm. Um, And then I have a headlining show tomorrow. I'm performing at Laugh Factory and then in Michigan with Joe Kilgallen um, this weekend. And then on Sunday, I'm speaking on a women founders panel all day. Yeah, that's um, so cool. Because I'm starting a new platform and also about to release my first line of jumpsuits and activewear and um, also founded you know, my production company and stuff so oh I'm kind God. of I'm kind of entertained like teaching women how to infuse like tech and uh, tech and merchandise and travel and applications into their careers so wow. that they can make partnerships to make things happen oh my god are there still tickets better. to the seminar <laughs> can I come you should, I can guess I can guest list you oh my god I think I'm gonna come if you, you should come yes you can come meet me at my hotel they're sending a car to pick me up okay <laughs> this is gonna be awesome yeah you should definitely come you can be my guest okay um, but yeah it'll be really good to talk to just you know people have a lot of different ideas of how to make things happen or how 
brand deals work or partnerships work. Yes. And I'm all ears for that kind of stuff mm-hmm. because if you can make that kind of stuff happen, you're not at the mercy of, yes, you know, I, you know, I could stay at the comedy, different comedy clubs, con- comedy condos, and like the walls right. are just made yeah. of chiz there. Yeah, <laughs> so I know. Like, it's so I gross. I'm staying in a nice place. <laughs> yes, every time you travel, you're like always in these gorgeous, plush hotels. So <laughs> do you mind if I, is that like a partnership deal? Yeah, I have, um, I have partnership decks for literally everything wow. that I do. Yeah. So I have... From brands for sponsorships, for travel, for different types of partnerships that have tiers created. And if they're an app and they're looking for user acquisition yeah. um, or I mean, basically what it comes down to is if I really like the tech world. Yeah. And so if people have a new app out, you need people on it. Otherwise, it's yeah. not valuable. Right. So there's a lot of room there for for partnerships. Absolutely. So I have those and then I have hotel brand decks yeah. and I have like. And I actually shot my my ex fiance like she used to shoot for like the Cosmo in Vegas and the Dana Hotel here in Chicago. Wow. And so we have like a lot of really great imagery and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I just built all these things and I send them to the PR people and then we make partnerships. Oh, that's amazing. So then I can stay in nice places. Yes. But I mean, <laughs> the work pays off. Like, I, yeah, yeah, for sure. It does. That's the best. Yeah. And it does. It's nice to be like greeted with like gifts and stuff. Yes. Like I show up and they're like, they, you know, they usually have your name on something. And I'm like, oh, cool. This is, it feels like yeah. my apartment. <laughs> Nicer than my apartment. Instead of your name and jizz at the comedy My condo. name is right. My name. <laughs> Although my having my name and jizz, I would never like, like thank you. what a romantic yeah. gesture. And you know how hard that would be? You'd have to do couple tries yeah you'd have to really like really fluff it out yeah for um, sure <laughs> <laughs> oh my god we are getting off track yeah, off, oh off my to god. a great start well like speaking of that that's like kind of how I started like following you in general I saw other people kind of reposting your stuff in the comedy community and I was like who is this bad bitch I need to follow her <laughs> immediately and then you had a show a comedy bar I think like last August yeah or it September. was end of August yeah mm-hmm. Yeah. So I remember you being in town and yeah, I just basically Instagrammed you and I was like, can I come to your show? And you're like, yeah, you can be <laughs> yeah. my accomplice. Yes, of course. Um, so yeah, that was like the first time I met you. You're so kind. You like gave me your phone number immediately. And like, <laughs> like no one ever does that. You know what I mean? So I feel like I've just been like texting you for advice or tips ever yeah, since. Yeah, for and sure. Yeah, you're just the best. So I wanted to thank you for that. Oh, thank and you. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's what it should be about. I mean, totally. I, I at one at one point was looking for answers too. Yes. And people gave them to me. Yeah. You like, know? And making it a community. I feel like mm-hmm. we call it a comedy community, but it's a lot of people are just on their own little islands and very for competitive. Sure. Yes. Well and, and you know, and the way I look at it too is like we're none of us always have the answers. No. Everything, especially the way entertainment works, it's always evolving. So Absolutely. If, if we don't talk to each other about what's going on and how people are getting paid and how to make partner you know yes. like yeah that we're not gonna know it's gonna just wreck everybody no one's shit. gonna get paid and we're all gonna give up exactly yeah. <laughs> exactly oh so fun so your career has definitely progressed you're traveling all over that I can tell so yeah, yeah let's kind of dive <laughs> into it so let's get into the travel scale the dreaded travel scale but I think we got a pretty good scale today yeah um, so on one end of the spectrum being someone that never travels a lot to the opposite end of the spectrum of someone that travels the most today's scale is Martha Stewart on house arrest in her glory days <laughs> <laughs> and to you know her partner in crime Snoop Dogg who is you know he's jet not Mr. Set. Worldwide but he's pretty close to jet setting rapper just the best yeah. so where do you kind of fall man I think you know th- that's a very that's a very schnazzy spectrum I mean like <laughs> do I have private jets and like all the like rolling Martha in Stewart weed? still had private jets <laughs> on house arrest right so <laughs> um but I'd say travel wise I'm like an eight or a nine yeah I'm I'm up there yeah um I last year I was on sixty four or sixty five flights. Wow! Um, Do you have a partnership with flights? I hope (laughs) I'm getting one right now. Hell yeah! So yeah, for my Vegas show, good doing that. Nice, Um, but yeah, last year was crazy. Every year it's always more. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I guess it's probably close to the same because this year I cut back on certain things that mm-hmm. I was doing too much, and then right. but then I end up going new places. So, um, but yeah, that that averaged out to being on a plane every five days. Wow, 
(laughs) the look of horror on your face (laughs) yeah and you know and knock on something though but i think and i just joked with my friend about this the other day because they were like wear a mask and the coronavirus and all that stuff and i was like you know what I never get sick and I travel all the time. Yeah. I'm not like touching shit and then like sucking on my fingers. Right. But also I grew up on farms and I ate so much shit. Yeah. Like actual shit. You have an shit. immune system of steel. Growing up. <laughs> yeah. No, like I don't get sick. Yeah. That's so awesome. So I'm not allergic to gluten and I don't get sick. Yeah. So that's not, all you need. <laughs> that's like on your profile. You're like not allergic to, <laughs> to gluten. I can eat anything and I never get sick. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And I don't sl- I sweat when I'm sleeping. I don't know. What else do people hate? I sweat when I sleep. sleep? <laughs> oh, my God. I'm going to die alone. Um, <laughs> Shit. Uh, so, yeah. Like, so this year you're traveling like equally as much. So kind of like on that every five day span. I mean, is it I'm, local? Is it like I'm, cross country? Yeah. I mean, or you did a Europe trip last year. Or I did Europe two. Tour, yeah. Europe tour last year. Yeah. That was wild. Yeah. I did two of those last wow. year. Um, that was crazy. I This year I was like, oh, maybe I won't do anything like Europe again this year. But of course, because I because I put that as a goal of mine mm-hmm. last end of 2018 I was like I want to start working in London I want to start working in Europe I want to start working in London and then I sat down in January of 2019 with my friend Rachel and we just were like let's just plan a Europe tour and we just produced the whole thing (sighs) and then after the Europe tour I ended up meeting by fluke one of the best PR people for the Edinburgh Festival what during before I went to UK early last year Mm -hmm. and they picked me up for Edinburgh this year. Wow. So oh my God. I am going back to Europe now. Oh, wow. And Look I'm at doing, that. doing Edinburgh for the whole month. Oh, my God. That's amazing. <clears throat> the so, whole month? Yeah. Like performing every night? An hour every single night Holy for a month. shit. You're going to be... I'm going to be a fucking beast. Yes. <laughs> you're going to be a well-oiled machine. You're going to be like... Yeah. You're not even going to have to like look at anything. You're just going to get up there and shit out that hour like yeah. every night. Oh my God. I'm excited for that. Um, But yeah, so that's what I'm working on right now is writing that new hour. Hell yeah, girl. Oh yeah. my God. Uh, hashtag goals. I'm like <laughs> getting like so pumped up right now. This is awesome. <laughs> um, So tell us about like disasters. Like any, like even from like your early comedy days or even just like trips in general. From traveling, yeah. um, the, the, the one that sticks out to me is we call it the $450 margarita <laughs> um, <laughs> because I was in uh, St. Thomas. This was in, I still lived in Chicago at the time. So mm-hmm. this was probably in 2008. And I had gone to St. Thomas with my best guy. The Virgin from, Islands or Minnesota? The Virgin, Virgin Islands. Islands. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think this would have happened. In the, I you never know. Minnesota gets buck. It does. I went to school there, and yeah, it does get buck. Um, that I have another story about Minnesota. <laughs> yes. Let's put a pin in that. Um, but it's more of a drinking story, though. I guess not a travel story. It um, but in this particular time, I went to St. Thomas, and uh, I was there with my gay best friend at the time, nice. and he was the, one of the biggest cocaine dealers in Chicago. <laughs> So he That's a was a good best like, friend to have. He was it was great because he was like my he would pay for everything. Like mm-hmm. there would be times where we'd get up in the morning, he'd be like, "Let's get a limo and go to the Gucci store." <laughs> and we would just go like buy he'd buy me stuff oh and God, and it best. wasn't a sexual relationship right. obviously so yeah it's the only time i've ever let a guy do that for me yeah because i was like he doesn't want anything out of this right i've never let any other guy buy me no. shit I, yeah so ugh. but um so yeah so we went to the virgin islands and it was another girlfriend of mine as well and we were supposed to fly back to chicago on a friday and we were having too much fun at the poolside bar <laughs> we sent her packing and he was like i'm just going to get us flights out tomorrow nice um and we just figured we'd go to the to the we figured we could just show up a day late to the airport and be like, we missed our flight. Oops, Oops. a daisy. Yeah. And that they would just book us on a new one, but that's not the case. Really? Um, so we each had to buy new flights and they were 450 bucks oh, one fuck. way to get back. <laughs> so um, that we call that the 450 margarita. That was a, that was a big one. We were in the oh airport for like three or four hours trying to rebuy a flight back. Cause it's really hard to get back from the islands once you get there because yeah, there really are only like one or two flights out like a day. Yeah. Maybe yeah. one mm-hmm. really. So, um, So that was a big one. Um, I've had a lot of stories of just miscommunication (laughs) recently when we were in Paris. Oh, God. Um, (laughs) This is so funny. So um, when I was touring with Rachel, we we went one night to have dinner 
next to the Eiffel Tower. Oh my God. And we Amazing. treated ourselves to yes. dinner and we shared a steak, we shared an appetizer and we got a bottle of wine. It was like a hundred bucks each. Yeah. It was more than that. It was, well, you're also paying like for the view. For the view. Yes. It was expensive. And we were, we were, we had been out like being touristy all day. So yeah. we had, um, you know, we were just in jeans and stuff. So the next day, Rachel was like, we need to dress up today. We need to be like very Paris. And I was like, fine, I'll dress up with you. <laughs> but we couldn't drop that kind of money again. Yeah. And so we went and got a backpack full of wine and sat on the bridge next to the Eiffel Tower so and had fun. a picnic in our nice dresses. And then um, after that, we tried to go to meet some people that we had met the night before at a place called the Black Pussycat. <laughs> or the black cat. The black cat. <laughs> so I got into a cab and I said, um, Le Chat Noir, but I said the T harder than you're supposed to. It's, oh. If you say Sha, Sha, like with yeah, a soft yeah, yeah. T, it means Shah. cat. But if you say it with a harsher T, it's pussy. Oh my goodness. So the black pussy? So That's what he thought took it us was? to oh, yeah. this place called the black pussy, <laughs> not the black cat. And the, it was in a different part of town. It was in the red light district. Oh my, there so you go. So we got dropped off in our like really gorgeous oh, dresses no. <laughs> to the red light district. And, it, and we ended up running into a rocker bar because oh, we didn't know like... We didn't know where else to go. Right. And we were like, and You're there was stranded there. It was it, like, you, there was nothing open. It's like the red light district. You have to know how to like knock on a place. Yes. And it's super seedy. Yeah. We ended up in this rocker bar and we were down like the, the, ba the basement was the toilets. And so we had to go down this like spiral staircase to the bathrooms. <laughs> so yeah. Her and I are in the stalls next to each other and we hear these dudes come in and we're like, oh my God. I just had that pit in my stomach. Yes. I was like, like something's going to go feel, down. Yeah. And I, I, I eventually I was like, well, I have to get out of the stall. And I come out and it was these like rocker guys that couldn't give two shits about us. Like, oh, good. I, I was really worried <laughs> for a were second. Harmless, yeah. Yeah. Because we, we had that extra like 45 seconds of stall where we were like, what do we do? What do we do? Yeah. Do we come out? And like, we just figured there would just be like dudes trying to like harass us right. or something. Um, not the case at all. <laughs> they could not have been more interest, more or less interested in two women in like dresses. <laughs> oh, and um, and then they were like the kindest people ever. And they oh, bought wow. us a shot because we told them. They was scared one... the shit out of us. Yeah. And then yeah. there was one girl that spoke English. So she was translating for and she was like, oh, the black, the black cat. You wanted to go to the black cat. It's in a way different part of Paris. <laughs> oh, and we no. were like. Yeah, we figured that out now. And yeah. so they ended up calling their friend to come and get us from his cab company. And oh, that's so sweet. It was sweet. just nice. Yeah. Like, it was an unexpected, yeah. you know, it could have been way worse. Yeah. <laughs> You're so good at, like, talking to people and, like, getting yourself like not out of things but you're just like hi um can someone help me and like yeah. yeah like you're very good at like putting yourself out there I feel like a lot of women are just like well we're in this situation and I'm just gonna like panic and, yeah, yeah. Rachel, Rachel was doing a little bit of that yeah um and but then I and I'm good at drinking too right like it makes so it I can easier. handle my yeah. booze yeah so when something starts to set in and other people are like in that panic mode I'm just like it's fine yeah <laughs> I've seen way worse yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah oh my god well tell me about like I want to learn about like your travels to the search from like early comedy days like what are just some like crazy like road trips that you've been on or even like the college story yeah um <laughs> the college story was the, <laughs> it just reminded me of the of the slap heard around the world it's like we still call it between me and my college friends yeah but I was um there was a there was a time in college where I had just gotten my tonsils out and broke my foot at the same time oh so God. I was like pretty much just a mess <laughs> debilitated yeah <laughs> and so I was still in a walking cast and um they had given me liquid morphine for my tonsils Ooh. because I couldn't swallow pills yeah yeah and I had it I didn't take any of it during my recovery and nice. I saved, saved that it. shit I saved it for a night <laughs> we would I, do that all the time our like college pharmacy or like health center was like drug pushers like yeah. if you even said like oh I, I have a little cough when I go to sleep they're like here's codeine we're like fuck yeah there yeah. is like, and you'd mix it with stuff and you're yeah. totally not supposed to do that I know <laughs> I took like a shot of this stuff and then drank a, like a shot of Captain Morgan and oh, it was wow. like um fear and loathing in Las Vegas where his legs <laughs> just turned to noodles like I couldn't <laughs> it'll send you to a different planet yeah. yeah I got real sick that night and like threw up in my walking cast when I got <laughs> Uh, which is <laughs> into your walking yeah cast. at least I picked something to throw up inside <sighs> of but so funny that night we, we ended up at this party that we always would go to and um 
I was competing with this guy for a keg stand, you know, and <laughs> nice. I and I beat him and then he got yeah. mad and I did it again. <laughs> and then he pushed me and Whoa. I and I slapped him. Yes. Really hard. <laughs> and then he ended up being one of my best friends <laughs> the rest of college. So oh that my was God. my Minnesota story. The second you said Minnesota, I was like, Oh, that's that's yes. then one stick out story I remember. But yeah, or touring early in comedy, I mean it just was like um, do you know Eric Oren? Do you guys know yeah. Eric Oren? Yeah. So he's Handsome part of Naked. Handsome Naked. Yeah. And oh, I'm, I'm yes, going to be in studio course. with them on Friday so recording fun. something. Um, but Eric's one of my OG. Are you going to rap? I get, I, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'll do whatever the fuck they I want me to do. I hear whatever you guys are I have, recording. I, I have no idea. Yes. I just was like, you guys get some beers and I'll just have some fun. Yeah. Um, but Eric and I, before I moved away from Chicago, we did a show in Indianapolis and we were so broke at the time. Right. We didn't get a hotel or anything. We just decided that we would meet people. And crash out on their couches. That were nice. And that somebody would let us stay at their That's place. A great That's plan. what I decided. Yeah. And we did. Um, Jeremy Vargo, I'm still friends with him on Facebook. Um, oh. <laughs> we met we met this couple out and they were nice enough to let us stay at their place. Wow. Um and they were lovely, but the room that we woke up and me and Eric slept on this like air mattress. It was like a weapon room. <laughs> oh my god, what? Yeah, like so, for their guns. Yeah, uh, yeah, and it was before Instagram and all that. So I, I don't, mean, it is ha- Indiana. Yeah, it was just <sighs> a room of fucking guns and knives. Wow. And I and you know you wake up and you're you know you're groggy and you're like, what the fuck? Right. Like, I didn't see these last night with the lights off. Yeah. The yeah. first thought you have is like, oh god. Yes. Somebody's about to dismember are... me. It's like saw. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for sure. So that was definitely a memorable moment. How did you guys, did you wake up the next morning? You're like, thank you so much for letting us stay. We're going to jet. Um, <laughs> we, I mean, he, they were really, they were really cool. And they had cats. Most you murderers know, people build with cats, trust. You they, know, they're not trying to murder people. I don't know, man. I don't Lots know. Lots of murderers of cats. That's and true. And are friendly and Actually, lure people true. in. Fuck. Ooh, you're right. I think you guys dodged in a bullet. In hindsight. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm trying to think of what other fucked up things happen. I've. I've I've always been like so easy breezy about just getting out of stuff. Yeah. So even if there was something that was like, Ugh, I would yeah. <laughs> just deal. I would just deal with it, and move along. But yeah, that was that was a pretty funny m- morning. Oh my god. <laughs> so I don't even know what I would do. I would be. I would probably take something. Honestly, I remember I'd be like, can just I take taking one of these machetes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just took pictures of it. Yeah. I had also woken up. There, there were other houses I'd stayed at in the past where I woke up and there were just animal heads all over the walls. Oh, God. So I feel I'm, like that would be very jarring. Yeah, that, that's jarring, too. It's a different kind of jarring. Right. So, you know what? I just I just realized I don't, I'm don't. I'm beyond those days where, like, waking up with shit on the walls. Yes. That is not art. You've come so kind. far. Yes. I know. That's what I think, too, when I think back on it. I'm like, oh, I stay in hotels now. Yes. I like my personal space. Yes. I used to just sleep on, like, the grocery is floors yeah oh god i'm so glad i i again that's probably why i'm immune to everything <laughs> just have like my face in everybody you've been rolling around in viruses for years yes forever <laughs> and for the record the masks have been debunked i want to verbally put they don't out work there. Right? they don't work yeah why do people wear them i don't know because it looks cool no it does not <laughs> it looks this woman so was like stupid. clutching her mask on the fucking red line this morning and i was like honey like you're yeah, it you can breathe. You, air gets through yes. that. Yes, and the virus is airborne. They yeah, said that. Like your masks you're not... only work for like debris. Yeah, like if on they're construction sites. Yeah, <laughs> sawdust. Okay, yes. if the virus was sawdust, you'd be all right. But exactly. Yeah, that's it's such a strange thing to me. I've never, I've never even over sanitized. No. I feel like sometimes that takes away some of the stuff that you need to like fight stuff. It does. My mom's a nurse, and she's like, "Don't use Purell or depend on it because it'll." you will kill all the good and the bad bacteria. Mm-hmm. So like the good bacteria that you need to like fight off bad bacteria is all gone. And yeah. now you're just, you'll get sick at the drop of a hat. If yeah. someone looks at you the wrong way, you'll get sick. Yeah. I mean, like, what do you think you're going to do with uh, clean, with clean hands? Everything you touch on an airplane has <laughs> I, not been wiped ever. Ever. They say the tray is the worst. Yeah. They don't, thing. nobody wipes anything. No. No. Nope. I always like sit next to old ladies that like wipe it down with like baby wipes. You're <laughs> like, oh, I know. <laughs> So like, cute. do you want one? I'm like, I'm all set. This is, <laughs> where did you get those? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. When I was flying to, because I fly to New York on Tuesday to do um, my monthly show there. 
But when I, we were flying last month, um, my friend Courtney, somebody had their um, their dog, like their, uh, what do you call it, for emotional support animal? Yeah. Under the seat next to her and the dog got nervous and shit all over <gasps> Courtney's leg. Whoa, all over her leg? <laughs> yeah. How? These are things that happen on airplanes that people don't talk about. But oh, yeah. Oh my God. Um, so just FYI, if you guys, if anybody ever gets um, animal stuff <sighs> on them on an airplane, call the airline because she got 60,000 miles out of what? it. What? Yeah. I might just make that up. I know. That's a good, like, <laughs> if you're <laughs> if a good liar. start getting calls from like hundreds of people. <laughs> like, oh, somebody shit on me. <laughs> They're like, yeah. we don't have a record of a dog on that flight. <laughs> oh my God. That's a good point. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Do you think it would count for babies, too? I mean... I think it, it's worth a try. It's worth a try. Yeah. But Definitely. Like, if you get a toddler next to you, then... Yes. What do you get to do? This toddler <laughs> threw up all over me. I want miles, damn it. <laughs> it that did not happen, thankfully. But. Yeah. That would be... That would honestly be my worst nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> like, don't fly with children. What is one of your worst travel nightmares? Oh, God. I think, like, one of the, like, worst ones of all time... I think I've told it on this already, but... Kind of similar to your St. Thomas story. So I went to Hawaii to visit some family and it was like our last day and our flight out was like at 9 p.m. Because it's either like 5 a.m. or 9 p.m. like on these islands. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do the 9 p.m. Thank you. And we're like, we'll get another day in. So we wanted to go to the pool so bad, but it was like rainy, sad. So we went over to my uncle's house and they started making us like margaritas same fucking thing yeah margaritas are not okay on a flight day yes they're so (laughs) delicious and like you think you're fine until you like stand up and you're like wow i am blacked out so Mm -hmm. we started drinking probably like in the afternoon maybe around like one or two and then we had to leave for the airport probably around like seven Mm -hmm. and so by that time i'm like toasted and (laughs) <laughs> the best part is like my flight was a little bit later than my sister's. So I like had plenty of time in the airport. And so I go through security. I'm a little drunk. I'm like kind of gathering my stuff. I'm like kind of stumbling, like putting my shoes back on. And yeah. like, just like the worst. <laughs> but I didn't have TSA pre-check. So I had to take my laptop out of my bag and put it into a tray. And I didn't pick it back up my laptop like my life and so I'm like sitting around the airport I'm like eating a sandwich like sobering up like just literally watching shit on my iPad I don't realize it until I get on the plane and I'm putting yeah I'm putting my bag under my seat and I'm like this feels awfully light and like I don't feel like my hard laptop in there so I like flip it open yes and I I just it dawns on me and I open up my backpack and it's not in there and I like jump up out of my seat and I'm like excuse me like <laughs> to the flight attendants I'm like mm. I need to get off this plane my laptop is in security like oh my god and they're like ma'am you're not getting off this fucking plane like we are about to take off like we close the door like nothing happens after they close the door yeah. like it's <laughs> yeah. so I'm like please 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 like you don't understand like I need this laptop like and um so she gives me like a business card for TSA and she's like you can call the TSA when you land like for your connection so I call the TSA and it's the Honolulu airport. So, like, it's not, or I think it was the Maui airport. So, like, it's small. There's yeah. like 60 people working there, tops. Right. Yeah. So, like, yeah, we got your laptop. And I'm like, thank God. If it had been anywhere else, it would have been stolen or Absolutely. they would have just kept it. Like, yeah. I have so many horror stories from friends that have flown through Europe. Somehow I've made it through those two tours in Europe last year where I was on like <gasps> 20 flights in Europe and yes. nobody picked through my bag. Yes. But I've heard, um, London Heathrow. I've heard London Heathrow. They will fucking take your stuff. They just go in and like shop in there. Yes. It's insane. My friend was devastated because she had gotten a bunch of pieces from a stylist friend of hers. Oh like my God. original pieces. Oh that, no. Yeah. And she was she landed and she was like freaking out in, in a in and she was like, Don't ever fly through London Heathrow. It's so the second time. Is it happened. a checked bag that they take shit yeah. out of? Oh, interesting. Because mm-hmm. if it was like security when they're like, We're gonna take your bag for a couple minutes and then like yeah. bring it back to you, I feel like you'd notice. But yeah. damn, checked bags. I know. Oh. I had um I had Kelly Howard on my podcast yeah. last year I- here in Chicago. And she used to work for the TSA. And you should listen to that episode. Oh, my God. I need to have her on my podcast. Yeah, you should have her. Yes. <gasps> yes. You should. And she also opened up about a lot of the, the stuff that the TSA would do. And it was, like, mind-blowing. Oh, I was like, holy God. fuck. Now, 
and, and you know, but you can't live in fear of people because I have some people that I know that won't travel with a check bag. I rarely do. I, I do can't. both. Yeah. If I'm gone for a while, I well, bring yeah. one that has like immediate shit in it in yes. case like my bag is lost for a day or two. Right. And then I check my other shit. Yeah. I will do. If I have to check, I'll do like one pair of shoes, like couple of outfits, uh-huh. like a coat. And then I always have like my toiletries like in my carry on. Yeah. Because like I don't. That shit's expensive to like keep buying. Yeah. So yeah. I always make sure that I have everything that I need for like at least a couple of nights. Yeah. And then checked back. I'm like whatever. Three other four pairs of shoes yeah. or whatever. Yeah. I've but gotten it's, so good at traveling. Like I have one backpack that's just ready to go with toiletries. And yeah. I, so when I'm like packing I don't even. Yeah. You just know just what you there. need. Yeah. I mm-hmm. have that too. I have like a separate makeup bag for traveling. So like I don't have to. <laughs> and it's like shit that I don't care about that much so I'm like if my Clinique breaks while I'm traveling I'm like no I just have like drugstore makeup I'm s- in my I'm same yeah. I have like a tube of mascara and that's yes. it I'm yeah. such a basic bitch when yeah. it comes to that I'm like I don't need like because if I lost like my expensive makeup I'd be pissed so I'm like I'll just take the the shit. Uh, oh makeup. yeah, I don't even. And we're on vacation, so like I'm not even wearing all makeup my makeup. All time. Is cheap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> I'm <such laughs> time. A, I'm so ratchet with my time. I like I don't spend time on. <laughs> I can't I'm justify <laughs> spending too much money on shit that I'm just gonna wash off my fucking face right? every day. Exactly. And not to shit on like makeup girls, but like some chicks at like Sephora when you go in there have disgusting skin underneath like the fucking mountains of makeup. I'm like, oh God, I don't want to buy makeup from you. Yeah, or just like, you know, (laughs) it's always funny (laughs) because I I don't ever really go into those stores, but there's times that I have obviously and like the person that's trying to sell you on an eyebrow pencil has like terrifying yes. eyebrow and you're just like they're like jet black and like rectangles you're like, you're like what yeah yeah and you're like <laughs> i don't want to look like yeah. you i don't get out of my face it's so true i'm like <laughs> my eyebrows are like light blonde i don't think we have the same taste <laughs> yeah. yeah or face sorry right. <laughs> yeah so true oh my god well this was super fun is this um, it already oh my yeah. god are we wrapping yeah we're good god, that was so fast so fast i know it's a time warp with these headphones it really on. is um so trips coming up this episode's coming out in a couple weeks so mm-hmm. yeah whatever you want to plug okay so coming up let's see end of march Oh, my new late night talk show de- debuts the last Wednesday of March. No oh, night. Nice. Is this the monthly show? It's monthly. Oh, It'll nice. be live. So I'll have a monthly in LA, two monthlies in LA, a monthly in New York, a monthly in Vegas. Oh, wow. Um, so the last Monday of every month, I have my Future World Models live show in Vegas. Um, so the, March 30th will be the next installment of that. We just relaunched it in February. Uh, it was packed. Please come to that. Yay. Pack it out again. Um, I have new sponsors, which is really exciting. And then, um, yeah, last Wednesday of the month, I have a late night talk show. It's in West Hollywood. More information will be on my um, Instagram. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're going to live record it and and turn it into episodic on Instagram as well. So anyone who doesn't come live will get to see like clips and stuff. Perfect. Yeah. So that'll be cool. And um, yeah, it's like a late night happy hour hangout session with different guests, like a variety type show. Yeah. And um, then May I have, I'm headlining in D.C. again. I just got back from there. Nice. Um, so that's at Comedy Loft the last weekend in May. Not the Memorial Day weekend, but the following weekend. Got it. And what else after that? Yeah, and then more shit. And then Edinburgh, the month of August. <laughs> <laughs> Plug your website so people can find yes, this. Yes, my website for tickets and touring is nphcomedy.com backslash T-I-X. Love and it. And my Instagram is nphcomedy. Oh my god, mine's MKB Comedy. Yeah. Wow. We go by three. Do you go by Natasha Pearl Hansen all the time? Yeah. Or, oh, nice. Or, or NPH or, like, or Tosh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Got it. Yeah, because I'm Mary Kate Back and people. What do they I call like, you? MKB? Yeah. Yeah. All the time. Mostly initial most people call me the initials. It's easier because yeah. Mary Kate's a difficult first name for people. Like I don't know why. Yeah, it seems like it would be so easy, but they just make you into an Olsen twin or something. <laughs> yeah. Just like yeah, I'm like MK is fine. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. So fun. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Check out her website, and we'll see you soon. Thank you for having me. Bye. Bye. Bye.